1% of the world's water supply can be used as drinking water. But we use it for so much more than just drinking it. Industrial applications, growing crops, collecting waste, and more. And after the water is contaminated through any of the applications that I described above, it is considered wastewater and then thought of to be disposed of and hopefully disposed of in the most environmentally friendly way. But what if we look at wastewater differently? Rather than just trying to dispose of it, we look at it as a resource. And that is what Peter, the founder and president of Swirltex, is looking to do. He has created a unique system of filtration that treats water without the negative environmental impact, energy consumption that is usually associated with this, or membrane fouling. And this is something that is desperately needed as we look to create a more sustainable world. All right, so just to get started here, do you mind telling me a bit about Swirltex and what led you to start it? No problem. So I'm Peter Christou, president and founder of Swirltex, and Swirltex yeah. started about back in 2015 when I was working on a lot of ceramic membrane applications before that, and it really bothered me how the oil would always stick to the membrane. And the doctrine at the time was trying to make the membrane out of different materials so the oil wouldn't stick to it as much. But I took a different approach and changed the hydraulics of the membrane. So I spun the liquid within the membrane to draw the oil into the center. As soon as that worked good, everything kind of spun off to applications on wastewater, et cetera, where now we made a form of filtration where we concentrate on how to keep the contaminants from not interacting with the membrane instead of using that membrane in different ways. Right. Yeah, that, that's so cool. I, I watched the video on your website of it just kind of like the swirling around and everything kind of goes to the center and then just you know goes through instead of using the membrane as part of that filtration process, you're kind of reversing it so that the water goes through the membrane instead, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's one of those processes that is simple enough that people get it as soon as you explain it. Say, well, that makes sense. Why would you not do that sort of thing? <laughs> right. Um, but the idea of manipulating buoyancy of contaminants and using a, a two-phase flow within a membrane to really separate those contaminants from the water that you're filtering is, is a new filtration process that we're happy to get on the ground level of. Yeah, definitely. So how do you go about doing that buoyancy, changing the buoyancy of those particles? Well, we add air for two reasons. One, we add air for volume to get the water more velocity as it's used to the membrane and okay. for bubble attachment. What we want is we want to saturate that liquid with air and or have a vigor enough mixing that the air will attach to the contaminants. So different contaminants like algae, for instance, stick to the membranes like snot usually. Mm -hmm. but what we can do is we can mix that with air so it has a flotation effect. So when we spin that algae within the membrane, it'll go to the center and not interact with the membrane at the same rates. So that's the same aspect that we have for wastewater, industrial wastewaters that have high clay contaminants, et cetera. It's how we keep those contaminants from interacting with the membrane. Wow, that's really cool. So how many different places are you guys working on? Like what kind of different projects do you apply your technology to? Well, right now, because the technology has so many different applications, so many <laughs> different markets, we're just trying to stick to produce water and wastewater lagoons, as well as the food and beverage market right now. So that's keeping us quite a bit busy right now. But later on, as we expand, we will be expanding into specialty applications and other wastewater applications for the membranes as well. Awesome. Do you have one example of a recent project that you did that you might be able to go into more detail on? Yeah, we've done projects for wastewater lagoons, for municipal wastewater lagoons, and we've done projects for produced water. Produced water is the water that comes out of the ground with the oil or mm -hmm. the, the gas. And people haven't really been treating necessarily because it's been too expensive to really treat that to any sort of quality standard, especially on a consistent basis. But we ran a pilot trial last year and we did exceptionally well. And now we're moving on to the next stages where we're now building one of the largest membrane produced water plants in Canada already. For lagoons, we use a different approach. Instead of the community having to upgrade their lagoon and spend million dollars on infrastructure, we just have a portable wastewater system that can be dropped off the lagoon 
drain that lagoon to prestigious standards of effluent quality or and or reuse standards, and then move on to the next community. It's a way of having one piece of infrastructure solve multiple communities' wastewater problems and get the water to the point where it can be reused for other means within that community as well. So right now, wastewater is definitely looked at a bad thing. The communities, people don't look at it as a resource. And now people are starting to understand that by doing something as simply as offering free water to local industries, you can really attract industries that use a lot of water for recycling facilities, greenhouse applications, different things can be used for that water. And it just depends upon the community's approach of how they want to reuse it. That's really cool. What was the latest community that you've used? What did they use it for? We used it at the community of Crossfield, where we sent that water directly to a golf course where they could need it. They desperately needed the water. There was some infrastructure that was in place that wasn't going to quite do the trick. So for the volume of water that we were doing, we wanted to stay away from as much chemical as possible. And we were able to do that with the membranes quite easily. Right, definitely. Why did you want to stay away from the chemicals? Just because the volume that they were looking and the amount of disinfection that was needed for that water before it got to the golf course was quite horrendous. So a lot of those chemical schools can kind of build up in that local environment especially when we're using that high of volume. So it's good that we can have a water reuse play where you're not concerned about the environmental impact of that water as well. Right. So it's not, you're not only just looking at, okay, can we just use that wastewater once again, but we're also looking to the fact like, okay, what's the environmental impact of using, reusing that water? Like, how are we going to treat it along the way? You guys have come up with a system where you you know you're not worried about the different chemicals that you might have to use to treat it got it to a point where you can not even go around that whole process and be able to reuse the water without harming the environment as well correct it's what's the impact if we reuse this water and then what's the impact if we don't reuse this water so hopefully water reuse always wins but you still have to go through that assessment period to see what works definitely so where do you kind of see swirl techs going in the next uh, six months to a year or so? Well, I think there's big things happening with Swirl Techs in the next six months to a year for sure. And now that we're starting to be able to travel again a little bit, it really kind of opens up different markets, especially down in the States, especially applications. We've really made the name from our, ourselves in Produce Water. And I think it's really concentrating on doing the one or two markets that we have really well, executing it. And then moving on to other applications where we can really show how the technology can be beneficial. Definitely. Yeah. I was talking with another company. They really talked about they don't want, just want to expand to other markets. They all, they want to expand well. They want to make sure that they're doing everything along the way in an efficient way so that they can expand really well, not just expand for expansion's sake. Yeah. For me too, there's different applications for the technology that I feel that can really do good that as a founder kind of in my heart eventually hopefully we can get there is that model for lagoons is really good in canada where there's a lot of lagoons open space etc in canada we of course we have seasons where it freezes in the winter time where we can't use that technology it pretty much goes in storage and then we use it in the summertime so we have a six month window to do all those jobs when we move into warmer climate areas texas or middle east uh, you know el salvador area that area where they still have a lot of the same infrastructure problems very minimal infrastructure lagoons but we're in situations now where that water can be reused and make a big impact and instead of a huge amount of money going to one infrastructure project one piece of the infrastructure portable infrastructure could service dozens of communities and that piece of infrastructure can be used year round. So it'd be like one piece of infrastructure doing the communities of, of a province or a, a state instead of a handful of different communities. So it's a different way of looking at a you know, wastewater infrastructure for developing countries as well. Definitely, because you can then apply it to these communities who can reuse the wastewater for things that they wouldn't be able to use for drinking water, but instead they can, you know, save more for their drinking water and then have their wastewater as well that they're reusing for other processes, right? Correct. Soon as that wastewater becomes a value, whether industrial or agricultural reuse, and especially with membranes, you can do it very safely, then wastewater becomes something that can help support a community, can help support that agriculture, help support that industry. Right now, it's how do we get rid of it? How do we discharge it into the environment? So I hope that turn to reuse is really going to play, especially where, especially in areas where water reuse is scarce and there's value to that water. 
now that we can get to a very high standard and you know with little capital investment on multiple communities could be really looked at economic strategy for a lot of different countries around the world yeah so i mean this this idea is like it's not just benefiting in one side but we are also getting wins on multiple levels you know the economic side as well right correct it's not just a win for the environment it's definitely a win for the community and it's a win for the economy as well awesome the big thing going around is planet profit and people all three of those things really the bottom line of that just with any company is really where you want to target and you guys definitely uphold that with swirl tech so what we talked about what swirl tech has going on for the next six months to a year what do you see for the wastewater industry as a whole? What do you think is going to be the trends coming up? Well, it's kind of funny because the wastewater industry hasn't changed much in the last 20 years. Like right. Since we started using membranes and since xenon kind of came along in the 90s, we've had a certain standard of way of doing things, but it hasn't really changed much. So I'm really looking forward to see the impact of genuinely doing things differently with the membranes. Mm -hmm. and seeing people's reaction to the significant increase of efficiency, flux, and fouling that our process makes, and then really seeing how that makes an effect within the industry too. It's not just for standard wastewater operations, but now that we can selectively pick what liquid we're extracting based upon its buoyancy mm -hmm. for different things like solvent extraction or protein manufacturing, where you're trying to extract heavier liquid or concentrated liquid, there's a lot of different applications for the technology. So. As more people learn about the technology, we're going to get more of those interesting applications for it, where eventually we get the time to do the piloting and develop it more. Definitely. It makes me curious. Do you, do you have an idea of like what other applications this can go by? There's lots. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> definitely lots out there. And I think, I think in the next few years, some of these really unique applications that only we can do because of the way that we operate the membranes or the flow pattern within the membranes will come to light and people kind of understand that even for something as simple as oil water separation, right? Swirling, right. it just makes sense. Yeah. So it's beyond looking beyond of just your typical oil water separation applications, things like algae and other contaminants that you need to keep off the face of the membrane. It's really going to be specializing in those type of applications. That's going to take the company to the next level. That's awesome. So just coming here to our last question, if you were to have somebody listening to this call, what would you want them to take away from Swirl Techs and just from the wastewater industry as a whole? What do you want them to take away from this interview and just bring home with them? I think if, especially those that are interested in the wastewater and water reuse, or especially membranes, is send us an email if you have a, a question about our process. I love talking geek; it's one of my favorite things. So <laughs> it's a good, it's definitely a, it's a good experience to explain the technology and letting people know more about it. And if you think you have applications where you can use technology, feel free to contact us. Very cool. So is that the one way to get in touch with you guys? Is through email or website and that kind of thing? Yep, just get in contact us through the website. It's probably the easiest where we can set up a video chat to discuss your application more. If you enjoyed hearing about how Swirl Tex is reused in wastewater, then I invite you to check out this interview to my left with Connor Bryant, CEO of The Rubbish Project, who talks about how we need to start considering everything with a mind to make things circular, where we reuse resources, because the linear economy that we are currently in just isn't sustainable.